safety roofing for patients and the public. This video is intended as an information resource for patients and members of the public wishing to know more about the deroofing procedure for hydrogenitis suppurativa, also known as HS. Some people with HS have problems with skin tunnels, sometimes known as sinus tracts, which can cause pain and release of pus when they become inflamed. In the video, we will describe what a person with HS might expect during a deroofing procedure. If you are a person with HS considering deroofing or their carer, it will be important to carefully discuss the procedure with your medical team to check whether it is the right treatment for you. After watching this video, you should expect to understand more about whether deroofing is suitable for you, know the main risks and benefits, be familiar with the equipment involved, understand the main steps of deroofing, and receive aftercare advice, including the expected healing time. Is deroofing the right treatment for me? HS is a skin condition that causes boils and skin creases such as the armpits and groin and may lead to skin tunnels and scarring. Deroofing is intended to treat a skin tunnel by removing the roof of the tunnel, allowing it to start healing better. Once healed, there should be less pain and less pus from the area. Here is an example of a skin tunnel. You can see here a probe gently inserted into a tunnel, showing the extent of it hidden underneath the skin. We advise that deroofing is carried out in a minor operation setting, similar to the room shown here. The healthcare professional performing the procedure will usually have one or two assistants in the room to look after you during the procedure, pass equipment, and to help set up and clear away. You can see here the equipment used to perform the procedure. The diathermy machine may make some beeping noises whilst in use. It heats up to stop bleeding, and if a smoke extractor machine or suction device is used, this can be quite noisy. The background noise has been removed in the video you're about to see. You will be asked to sign a consent form before the procedure, saying you agree to go ahead. Benefits and risks of the procedure should be discussed, and any questions you may have can be answered during this process. Most people do well with deroofing, but there are some risks you need to know about. Risks include pain, bleeding, infection, scarring, HS returning in the treated skin area, and the need for dressings until the wounds have healed. At the start of the procedure, the healthcare professional will examine you and mark the extent of the area due to be deroofed with a skin pen. You will then be positioned comfortably on the operating table or couch. Local anaesthetic, to make the area numb, will be injected around the marked areas. This can be uncomfortable, but the stinging sensation only lasts for the duration of the injection. The local anaesthetic takes five to 10 minutes for full effect. The skin will be cleaned with a cold antiseptic fluid. Drapes will be placed around to keep the area clean. Try to keep still during the procedure and keep your hands under the drapes. The healthcare professional will check that the skin is numb before starting the procedure. You may feel pushing and pulling sensations, but should not feel sharp or painful sensations. If there is discomfort, let the healthcare professional know and more local anaesthetic can be injected. A probe is gently inserted into any skin tunnel openings. The probe is then lifted up and away from the skin with gentle and even pressure. The diathermy is used to smoothly cut the roof of the tunnel along the length of the probe. There may be a bit of smoke seen or the smell of smoke in the air at this point. A sharp spoon called a curette is used to scrape away unhealthy tissue and the top layer of scarring. This will produce an even bleeding wound bed. The diathermy is then used to stop any bleeding points. At the end of the procedure, an ointment is applied. Then a non-sticky dressing is put on, followed by absorbent gauze and something to stick this in place, or a wrap of woolen crepe bandage, depending on where it is. In terms of aftercare, there is not usually a need for antibiotics. You should be advised that any small areas of bleeding through the dressing can usually be managed by pushing on them for several minutes until the bleeding stops. A follow-up appointment for a dressing change will be arranged before you leave. We suggest the first dressing change be about two days after the procedure. You can see here what a typical wound looks like after two days. Further dressing changes can be arranged at the GP surgery, or you may be able to change them yourself at home. Wounds typically take two to four weeks to heal, but larger wounds may take six weeks to heal completely. 
Here are the wounds seen in the video four weeks after the procedure. You can see the largest wound is much smaller than it was and there is evidence of healing all around the edges. The smaller wounds have healed almost completely. And here are the wounds three months after the procedure demonstrating complete healing. The procedure for me was quite good. The worst part of it was the numbing injections. Um, there is a, a smell of the smoke while it's, the, it's burning. In terms of the noise of the suction, it didn't really bother me because I had a nurse behind me tapping me on the shoulder and constantly reassuring me. The rest was really good and everybody was really, really nice, supportive. Um, looking after the wound, I had daily dressings with the surgery, district nurses, and then my husband took over and it's healed really well. The scar feels to me now as smooth as any other piece of my skin. It doesn't, it doesn't look like a scar, it looks more like a tattoo. I'm really pleased with it. De-roofing has helped me because I've now got the use of my left arm again. I would recommend de-roofing to other HS patients, yes. Thank you for watching. Should you have any questions regarding this video or the procedure, please discuss with your local HS medical team or contact the Theseus study team and we will do our best to help you. We're grateful to Medtronic for providing the diathermy equipment used in the video.